Do you remember when the BBC made War of the Worlds? And we pay 145 quid a year and we have to sit through shite like that, what they did at Christmas. Well, in 1998, they made something worse than War of the Worlds, and I'm not kidding you. Now, our feature presentation. Hello and welcome to another episode of It Could Have Been a Classic. And this is where we sort of delve in between cult movies and not the mainstream and we're a bit below cult movies. We're right at the bottom of the basement, you know. We go for the cancelled stuff, the stuff that was just so bad, but we look for any potential that in a what-if scenario could this have gone somewhere. So far on this season, we've had quite a lot of winners that the were potential with things. But then we get to the stinkers. Yes, the ones that, well, the ones we don't want to know about. There's things in this universe that should never get made. This is one of them. 1998, Invasion Earth, a collaboration between the Sci-Fi Channel and the BBC. Now, I'm not anti-BBC. I'm not, but I don't watch it anymore. Except for Doctor Who. And uh, it, it's, well, this is 98 before streaming. This is when VHS went out and DVD were coming in and people were getting into home computers. This was the early days. This was the days of being primitive. So Invasion Earth, uh, it, right, it, Invasion of is a dark science fiction drama about the discovery of a planned invasion and the conquest of Earth by a sinister race of interdimensional alien beings and the efforts of a small NATO force who strive to counter the threat. Guest starring Fred Ward, Remo, do you remember him uh, in that Remo? Yeah, but many people don't remember that one. The series was conceived, written and co-produced by Jed Mercury, a former physician. Who under the pseudonym of John McCure gained prominence in Britain in the 1990s as the creator and writer of the offbeat medical drama series Cardiac Arrest. The principal cast included Vincent Regan, never it obviously really spotted him in help, but this was his first acting job. Maggie O'Neill, she's she was a babe, but she still is. Uh, who later cost dad declared British drama series Shameless. And obviously, we've got Remo, Fred Ward from Tremors, which a superb movie. And Anton Lesser as the alien abductee, Lieutenant Charles Terrell. Invasion Earth was a co-production. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, but I will say it was one of the first British TV series to feature extensive use of computer-generated imagery, CGI, and the Armed Forces played a big part in this, which they did. So, shall we get into this? Don't shoot!
Is he German? Zero. So, Invasioner starts off in the 1940s during the London Blitz. Something gets shot down or crashes. And it's obviously a spaceship. No, they all think it's some kind of Luftwaffe superplane. And then uh, there's this uh, Charles Terrell, he's like this officer. He's figured out what it is, that it's an alien spaceship. And one of the aliens does a runner and the soldier shoots it and he tells him off. And then there's another one that's alive and he pulls its helmet off. And it, and, and he tells the, his superior officer, these are not, they're not Nazis. They're from somewhere else. And the poor alien ends up in a, in a prison. And uh, you're getting flashbacks to this. It sort of explains that one day this Charles Terrell disappears in the 1940s with the alien because the government, well, they don't know what to do about the situation. They don't know what it is because some of them won't, but like the higher ups won't believe it. You know, they think it's some kind of secret weapon by the Germans, but it's not. And, and then Charles Terrell vanishes and then we jump to the 90s. Uh, where a, a UFO comes into into British airspace, and they send up two uh, fighters to intercept, and there's a shootout. Now, now, for the start of this series, it is quite good. You know, I think the aerial battle with the UFO is quite interesting. You know, there is look, look I know it is. You know, there is some potential with this in slight moments. Now, I found the beginning quite enjoyable to this. I will say that there's a lot going on and it's moving fast. And I quite liked it for that. You know, and his reaction when he's in the tornado fighter and he's seen a UFO and it's just flying past him like Max 7 or whatever. And he, they, they go on two planes and they can see it at the ground station, the radar station. The other fighter's a few minutes behind him and they're telling him not to engage. Two contact has now passed above 23,000 feet. Scimitar 2, abort intercept. Scimitar 1. Scimitar 2, you will abort intercept. Chris, you're pushing the aircraft too hard. He's hit us with something. I'm going to hit him. Scimitar 2, break off. You are ordered to break off. It's back. Scimitar 2, engaging contact. Scimitar 2, you do not have clearance to engage. Break off! Scimitar 2, your formation leader vetoes engagement. So, like, after the aerial battle, uh, he shoots it down. His mate dies in back at plane because they're going to a dive. And, and then we jump to the hospital and we get Fred Ward Remo. Oh, yeah, and we got Moxie from Offing the same pet playing uh, playing the doctor who's really posh. He's, he's an amazing actor, him, isn't he? he I, saw, I remember I saw him in uh, Batman. He, he's been around, hasn't he? So, so like, he, he, like Fred Ward's this no-shit general, like, and, and he's got the uh, head of his hair when uh, her from Love Joy Lady, what is it? I forgot her name. And she's not, she's not having it. you like, like she, he's going like, I would in, flying at a thousand mile an hour. This thing were flying around as if it were nothing. It, it was circular, spherical. And I shot it down and, and, and she's going, well, what, what markings did it have? Well, it didn't fucking have any. It would have, it would have, it would have UFO. Do, do you know what I mean? And, and she's, it's like you get four, six, five episodes of her in denial. At least four episodes of her. She gets on my nerves watching this because she fucking denies it that there's an alien invasion until she actually gets to see the aliens. She thinks it's some kind of like plot from the East, you know. But Fred Ward's sanity is like American general. He's like, he knows the summit not right here, you know. In this case, the Royal Air Force. Now describe the aircraft, Flight Lieutenant Drake. Sir, I did not recognize the aircraft as being any known type. I saw a luminous object, approximately twice our size, roughly spherical, 
with no aerofoil surfaces. Any markings on it? What country? You heard what I said, Mum. Don't you get it? So, so like, we got the scene in the hospital where, like, she is just not accepting it, right, is Wing Commander or whatever. So then we sort of jumped to the scene. Well, there's been two scientists at SETI or some organisation that have detected two transmissions. And there's one going out and one is blocking the one that's going out. And by the end of this episode, these two scientists figured out that there's, there's some kind of conflict with two alien races. No, they do. This is like out because but they can't like... Uh, they don't know what the uh, subscri- uh, you know the uh, message is saying, but they know one is blocking the other. But meanwhile, when the UFO got shot down, Charles Terrell from the 1940s, who hasn't aged a day, is running around the islands of Scotland being chased by the army. And they catch him, they shoot him, but he makes himself invisible. And uh, that's like in this episode. And, but there's the same where, where this crash, where this interdimensional vortex opens up and he's shitting himself and he runs off. You know, so, so like she's onto it and she ends up in a, in a, well, she drives off to Scotland where you've got Kelvin from EastEnders. Do you remember Kelvin, right? He's a scientific computer genius, right? And, and, and it started, I mean, it started off with potential, and then this is where it goes up its ass. It really starts just, well, I don't know what the hell's going on after this. So she goes up to uh, Scotland, and guess what happens? She meets him, who shot down the aeroplane in a bar, and, and they end up teaming up together, and they go to Air Force Base because they found the wreckage of the UFO. And she sees it, and it obviously, meanwhile, the squadron commander, she's not having it. it it's it's foreign. It's Russian, right? It, uh, you know, and the other dude running around the islands with his soldiers chasing after him. But meanwhile, Kelvin from EastEnders has figured out that there's two alien conflicts going on. And, 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 and so they catch him. They catch the guy that crashed in the spaceship from the 1940s, you know, and and this is where it just gets fucking stupid. It really is. And I, I had to sit through six episodes of this so far. What the hell are you doing? Delete it. It's only a draft. I wasn't going to put it out till we discussed it. Delete it. Okay, okay. Amanda, when are we going to go public with this? When we find out what it says, if we find out. So the catch Terrell, right? Kelvin's figured out there's a, a multiple invasion uh, of two alien entities at war, and he calls them Echoes and NDs. Now, the NDs are like, uh, uh, I think they're the interdimensional ones, and the Echoes are the ones flying around its spaceship. You know, and meanwhile, uh, uh, the, the squadron commander, she still what accepts it. So meanwhile, the scientists and her and the him that shot down the spaceship, they're investigating. And uh, they discover in uh, Terrell's map, he's got a tracking device. So them in the other dimension, right? The org- well, the organic aliens, right? They've got organic technology. They're tracking him and they're always trying to open the portal to get hold of him. And 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 like in one of the later episodes, suddenly these portals open up and they start kidnapping soldiers, 
do you know what I mean? All these soldiers are getting kidnapped, right? And and they're all firing guns and all this because they're, like, they're after them. And they work out they're going to catch one of these interdimensional aliens. Then up in the sky, there's a big explosion. And it's come out, right? Now, this Terrell, he's, he's a pacifist, right? And he fucked off with aliens, right? Now, now he's come back to Earth to warn us about these NDs because what they do is they like, apparently, the echoes, are, right? They've got like, they're really peaceful. So, what's happened is, is like, they've all killed themselves because they don't want to be controlled by these. Now, these like NDs, they start kidnapping people through and 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 they genetically alter them and moxie who plays the doctor the post doctor the the brainwash a couple of them and he goes off to like a dam in scotland and jumps in it and this like disease uh this genetic thing gets released right but they manage to stop that it's in the water and, and it affects women now they've got a thing for women right now, the scientist woman, the, she gets kidnapped, sub fruit vortex, but they don't do anything to her, but they have they've changed their genetic structure. It's different. They're trying, they're turning out women into hybrids. So because them in fourth dimension can't exist in our world. And what they do is they go around world to world from their dimension and absorb all organic energy in our universe. Yeah, it's something like that, right? And it's absolute bollocks, right? It really is. Right, so like, so they th were pointless him coming to Earth, right? Flying around, and then and then when he turns up, he's got all his, he's just whinging on, like, for three episodes about how, you know, you're all in danger. But, you know, what about all these advanced aliens? Haven't they got any technology to give us to help defend ourselves? But no, they're above all that. So they're all gone, like, by episode three or four. They, they, they're gone. And that Charles Terrell, they get him. They manage to suck him through portal. And that's it. So, like, it's like they come up with the plan to catch one as well. So they use the track, they use the spaceship, what's left of it, turn it on. And uh, uh, they got this big box and a portal opens up. And this ND thing flies through because they can't survive long in our environment. They catch it, but it blows out of this big metal cage and it flies back into its dimension. And that's when she sort of thinks, well, uh, yeah, all right, aliens, the real then. And that's where we end up with this. Do you know what I mean? So it, it just gets annoying. Right, so it's the scientist woman, she gets kidnapped. She's like changing into an hybrid. And they stop the other, human, other soldiers that's converted to do like release this genetic thing to affect people. Well, there's the town near base. It's uh, and everybody's been affected. And 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 Doc he, he thinks it's some kind of food poisoning. I'm, oh, I mean, I, 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 I just feel like banging my head on a wall here. Right. So like they get this general, this big general comes down from a oh, white hole and he's not having it either, you know, and then things start to happen. failed against the Endies. What if it's also failed on Amanda? She could jeopardize I need her right now. The artillery is going to position. Take them on at the battery. Well, go on! Sir. Come on, cover there! Cover there! Just telling you straight, sir. Artillery isn't going to work. What do you mean? They can distort space, open channels from other dimensions. What type of weapon do I need against other dimensions? My people need time to find out. Look, David, that thing is out there, and I've got the weapons and equipment here. Now. Oh, just fucking nuke it, man. All you've got to do is nuke it.
sound like Kelvin, right, from EastEnders, who's a scientist in this. He creates his, like, 90s laptop that's got Windows 95 on or whatever, decides to go wondering that, because it all starts off at the beginning, the like, final episode, the aliens, right? Because there's a great scene where, like, the aliens are trying to take people in the town and the soldiers, they've worked out when they open the vortex so they can predict them. And there's a great scene where they're running around this town shooting at the aliens with loads of bullets, but then they think they've won because, like, the squadron commander, Erdut didn't believe it for how many episodes, takes in a plane and maps out their dimensional vortex to get information. Then there's a massive artillery ballard because this big blob thing, like, it's eating the planet up. It's like, it, it's their way in. It's like this organic machine. And it's like a big blob thing. I, I don't ask, right? And then Kelvin, right, decides to communicate with it and it sucks him in. And that's it. The, he's gone. So, like, the two, like, the scientific genius gone, right? You just see him later on for about four seconds getting in it. Well, I'm not going to say not being anal probe, but, uh, you know, being organically done stuff. To... Then they decide that after a load of arsing about, right, and she's becoming an hybrid and, and, and he's in love with her, it's it, him that shot down the UFO. I mean, it just gets fucking worse, right? I had sit for six fucking episodes of this shite, right? Like, they decide that they're going to nuke it, right? And 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 so, like, they can't keep it a secret anymore because this thing's, like, it's, like, a mile big and it's, like, 8,000 feet high or whatever. So they're going to nuke it. So the 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 so he goes, they go in, he goes in, and, like, they, they get, I'm going to cut through all shite in this, right? They decide to go fly into it with a nuke or they're going to, you know, and 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 we get this like where they're in the aeroplane uh, and he's flying it because like he's trying to make up for, you know, trying to you know prove that you know he lost his his his, his pilot mate and he wants to put things out. And she's becoming an hybrid, so she's in touch with him, and uh, he's gonna go in there, isn't he? You know, oh god, fucking hate this series. <laughs> All systems serviceable. Stay left, 15 degrees. DI shows no deflection. Left, 15 degrees. Turning. New heading, turning on to 255. HUD inoperative. My attitude indicators are starting to topple. Cut off your instruments and listen to me. Pitch up. I'm giving you 30 degrees of no-no. Climbing. FB is increasing rapidly and it should have not in the climb. I think we're in a descent. Holding back. Artificial horizon spinning. Turn and slip erratic. Ignore the instruments. Steer right. 60 degrees. I feel like we're in a steep dive now. You're Losing your radar signal. Reports condition. Your signal is breaking up. Say again, all the radar. Do you read? Do you read? I've lost them.
10 knots below a store. Still no buffet. Controls remain responsive. Guess we're not gonna stall after all. We're in the channel. 30 seconds to target. Missile arc. 15 degrees left. You should acquire lock. Negative target lock. I do not have a target, Amanda. I can't trust my instruments and I can't trust what I see. Trust me. gonna say like you get the scene where they fly him and her because uh, she's becoming one of them right after ridiculous love affair and rest of it i mean this series has been so much hard work and this review has gone on longer than normal normally i like to do these things in 15 minutes but bloody hell fire in this thing and um, whoever put this together right they fly it in, they nuke it or whatever, right? And it vanishes. So they're all jumping around and he's laughing and he's telling and then there's a scene where he's going, we'll cure you and all that. And then there's another one. Five minutes later, it grows even bigger, you know, a big blob thing. And that's it. And, and then you've got Fred Ward, at the end of it, with everybody at command centre. Well, he's just having a breakdown. Going well, we'll have to new this one, and 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 if they keep appearing, and we'll just have to keep nuking them, but then we won't have a fucking planet left. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'd nuke this TV series if I could, and that's it. It, it finishes obviously because the viewing ratings for this were so bad that no, they just didn't even got season two. I'm glad we never got season two of this. And you know what this is going, don't you? You know, I this is one of the worst sci-fi TV set I have ever sat through. It is absolute shite. And I forgot all about it. You know, I, I, I totally forgot all about it. I mean, if the Doctor had turned up in the fucking TARDIS, it might have saved this. Do you know what I mean? But no, so you're going to say to me, is it a classic? No, you know where this is going, don't you? That's right. 